All right, well, I got another hoopty project car for the channel here. I've actually wanted one of these for a long time. No, it's not the Type S. She's a beater. <laughs> you can probably see the first thing. Well, I don't know. What's the first thing you notice? The mix-matched wheels or the, the huge dent in the bumper there? But anyways, we'll have this on the channel, and I'll be fixing her up, modifying it, racing it around and whatnot. Um... So this is a 05 base model RSX. It's automatic, which I honestly didn't really care. I kind of wanted an automatic because uh, with this car, at least this year, you get automatic, it's still a five speed, just like if you get the stick. Now, a lot of the newer cars, you get either the same amount of gears or even more gears with the automatic now. But back in the day, like all the 90s cars that I'm used to building and even early 2000s, a lot of time, if you got the automatic, it mean you got a four speed auto. And if you got the stick, you got either a five speed or a six speed. But in the case of this, the uh, automatic is still a five speed. So I figured other than, you know, off the line, cause you can't pop the clutch, that it would be just about as quick as the uh, five speed manual. However, I've already found out I'm incorrect about that. I don't know about the rest of the gear ratios, but I watched some acceleration runs and uh, first gear is a lot shorter with the five speed manual than it is in the automatic. So not only can you not rev it up and pop the clutch to take off the line uh, in the auto here, but your first gear is even taller, making it even sluggish off the line. So that sucks. But anyways, I'll give you a look around here and you can see just how uh, rough this thing is. So I only paid $2,200 for this. Again, it's a 05 and it's got 170,000 miles on it, which isn't too bad for the year. Um, so you tell me how bad you think it is off <laughs> having only paid 2500 for it and just like with the eclipse over there i found more issues with it uh just since bringing it home and i haven't even looked at it yet i just noticed more things on the drive home than uh what i noticed on the test drive which we'll go over so again i'm not sure which is more painfully obvious but we got the mixed match wheels so i have the other matching wheel it matches the front the wheels on the other side match the front so cool little aftermarket wheels there not, not in the greatest shape but i do have the matching one i haven't looked over it real good yet um it's got a flat tire on it they claim that's the only thing wrong with it no cracks no bends anything like that but like i said i haven't really had time to examine it yet so hopefully that other wheel that matches will be okay so this bumper's all jacked up and they got it like all zip tied up and everything obviously they hit something with it and the whole thing is loose and rattles around <laughs> see so uh that definitely needs some help i'm probably i figured i was like well i could just replace the bumper but knowing what they probably want for an acura rsx bumper i'm probably just gonna see if i can heat it up and on a warmer day pop that dent out and do a better job of clipping it up obviously the headlights are you know kind of crappy you know, 20 year old car so i may redo those or just buy new ones um once again mix match tires of uh, all kinds of different tread depths and levels and different brand names and crap like that and they're pretty poopy tires on top of that they're like driving on balloons so that's something i'm definitely going to correct um you know overall body's not too bad other than that bumper being banged up there and we do have some rust starting it's not too bad yet and I got this to deal with here something impacted it there so I'm gonna sand that up and paint over that didn't mean to show my rear license plate there uh, one cool thing and it was a requirement I had it's all stock because I want to do the you know you can buy one a bunch of these got headers and exhaust systems and cold air intakes and all that and that's cool if you want to do that and it already has it because you're going to save a lot of money not having to buy it and do it yourself but for the the point of these videos i wanted a stock car so i'm going to spend all the money and do all that so we can see what the improvements are so this thing's completely stock so stock exhaust and i'll show you under the hood in a second this about blew my mind um as rough as this thing is and then with older cheaper cars this never works I can't believe the trunk uh, trunk shocks there, or whatever you would call it, actually work. So that's a freaking miracle. There's that other wheel that matches, like I said. They got some panels in here. I noticed, I'm glad they're back here. Hopefully they're not 
too busted up. It doesn't look like it because I didn't notice because when I went on the test drive, the guy was sitting in the passenger seat that the ECU down there is exposed and all that and the speaker. So there's the covers for that. Obviously, they were too lazy to uh, twice. I don't know if it's two different owners or what, but they just left the tape on there from their temporary tags before I got it. And the guy said he had it for like a couple years. So that means he just left it on there the whole time. So I'm going to have to scrape that off. There's from that side, I was like, what happened to the, the rest of the factory wheels? I figured, I don't know. It was a weird situation, but that's a factory wheel there, the one that doesn't match. So again, got a little bit of rust there starting. And, uh, I mean, overall, it looks kind of okay. We do have the dent here on the fender. Oh, yeah, I didn't show you this yet. All this, the, uh, because of the impact, it's all broken and popped off so I'm gonna have to fix that the other sides like that too I should be able to rig it up there though there's still some tabs that aren't broke off they're hiding pretty good right now because it's got a little dusty I had a pretty far drive back home but I didn't notice this till I got there but this thing I mean obviously you can see some scratches and stuff there but it's got these dents just all over it which looks freaking terrible it's all over the roof too. Again, it's kind of hard to see because of the dust and the way the light's hitting it right now, but they're all over this thing. I was not happy about that. So, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I'm gonna see if like maybe there's some little kit I can buy, you know, like the little suction kit or whatever, and like see if I can pop a bunch of them out. And if so, I'll make a video on that. But so from a distance, it looks pretty good, just like, you know look pretty good in the pictures but then you start adding everything up it's like wow this thing's actually pretty beat up and the uh the interior is just absolutely disgusting um, no disrespect meant to smokers but it absolutely reeks and that does not help that's literally just a pile of freaking cigarette ash it's like they were just flicking their cigarette out on the floor um so yeah, it reeks. I'm hoping to, uh, obviously I'm going to clean up the interior. Hopefully make it smell nice one day. Seats tore up, but you know, it's pretty commonplace for an older car with higher miles. Um, they left all their trash in just random places for me, so that's nice. There's a whole bunch more crap they left. <laughs> Surprisingly, the, the gauge cluster is crystal clear. It does have the plastic overlay you know usually those are all smeared and nasty and so i was like wow really you you clean the gauge cluster but you leave that there there's the ecu just being exposed there so that's a disaster waiting to happen your passenger get in and kick it and bust uh, the wire in there and then your car won't run so definitely got to get that cover back on there also amazing it does not have a cracked windshield i don't know if it's just this area or what but it seems like every other car i look at that's under three thousand dollars for example they have a cracked windshield always so that's also amazing that not only does the trunk hatch work but there's no cracked windshield and there's under the hood there so uh before i went and looked at it like i said it looked better in the pictures you know i could see the dent there um they didn't really take pictures to where i could see any of that rust starting they also hid the mix match wheel although i suspected it because they took pictures of every angle to where you could see the car except for showing that wheel so i figured that that was a different color uh, different wheel and it was but thankfully like i said they had the uh, matching wheel that's in the trunk there so uh, when i get new tires they'll be all matching so that's a huge relief right there because i was thinking i was gonna have to try to track one of these down used or buy a new one which then wouldn't match all the beat up old ones <laughs> to get it to match because it would just drive me crazy having that one wheel not matching uh, but the listing they didn't say that anything was wrong with it although i figured for the price you know this should be like a four or five thousand dollar car it probably books even closer to six if it was you know mint didn't have any issues and it was clean so i figured there'd be some issues but you know i was running driving rsx for cheap so um, but yeah just looking at the listing i figured there was a mixed match wheel uh, I could see the dent in the picture. Uh, they didn't really show much of the interior, so I figured the interior was, you know, tore up, which, again, that's pretty common. 
Uh, I don't think they showed that dent in the bumper or anything like that in the pictures. So uh, they basically tried to hide everything. So then once I got there, I noticed how nasty the interior was, obviously. I noticed all these freaking dents all over it, which, by the way, I was like, what is that, hail damage, I'm assuming? And they claim is from being parked under a tree for a while that all the stuff falling out of the tree put the dents in it. I don't know about that, but that's what they say, because to me it just looks like hail damage, but whatever. Then I noticed the bumper and then, you know, the small amounts of rust here and there, which again for uh, Ohio is, is common because of the salt on the road. So I did notice this few other things. Um, but on the test drive, you know, the check engine light's on and the service light is on, which again, <laughs> to be expected for a 20 year old car that's only 2200 bucks. I mean, they were asking 25, but I talked them down to 20, 22. So, but yeah, no big surprise that the uh, check engine lights on, but it uh, ran and drove fantastic. I mean, it could use an alignment, um, but other than that, it ran and drove fantastic, seemed to shift correctly and all that. And, you know, I stepped on it once and uh, it ran out fine. The only thing I noticed is that. Like, it felt kind of sluggish because I'm used to, uh, I've actually just previously, because I got another sticking caliper on the Eclipse, so I've been driving the Rio around for about a, a week, week and a half, and uh, the Rio, yeah, it's a six-speed manual, but it's a little 1.6 compared to the RSX having the 2.0, and the RSX is just feeling sluggish, so... I was like, I wonder why this thing feels so low on power. Like, it felt weaker than the uh, the Rio back there. And obviously off the line, you know, there's going to be a big difference. But I mean, like, even cruising down the highway, when I go to roll in the gas a little bit, and it just wouldn't go. Even when it would step down a gear, it still, like, it just didn't want to move. Uh, so then I got on it and just punched it. And then it, it takes off slow, but then once it gets revved up, and I know it's got VTEC and all that, and I've had cars with VTEC and uh, the Corolla over there even has the uh, VVT, that's the 2ZZ motor, so I'm familiar with that, um, but it's just real, real gutless down low, and then once it hits VTEC, then it finally takes off, so when it hit VTEC, when I stepped on it once on the test drive, then it felt like it was a little bit quicker than the Rio, and I was like, okay, that seems about right then, so this thing's just... It's just all top-end power, which, again, I know how VTEC works and all that, but, again, with this having a larger, more powerful engine, I expected it to have, honestly, more bottom-end than the Rio, and it at least currently does not, and I'll come back to that because I think it's got some issues, which I'll I'll go over more. But, yeah, it uh, ran and drove fantastic, so I was like, okay. So it's just a beat-up, neglected uh, RSX, but the, uh, you know, it seems to run, run and drive like a top, so, you know. I don't think I'm really going to have any reliability issues out of it, but that was kind of my thoughts after the initial test drive, so we agreed on the price, and I came back down the next day and got it. Oh, I'm forgetting a few things under the hood here I noticed um, when I went and looked at it. So, uh, well, this actually was pointed out to me here because when you take off from a stop, there's like a buzzing under the hood for a second, and then it stops, and the guy was trying to tell me it's this down here. You can see there the intake boot where it attaches to the throttle body is torn. So I definitely got to fix that. And he didn't even notice this, but I pointed this out to him. The freaking wires here, if I can get the correct lighting right there, they are pulled out of that coupler right there, which I think goes to this. And I'm not quite sure what that is just yet. Um, he tried to say it had something to do with like dual runners and the intake and all that, but um, as of right now, I'm not 100% sure what that is and what it does. I'm assuming it's some sort of vacuum thing or whatever, but I mean, it's electronic if that's the plug that goes to it. Anyways, we got this broken off here, and I was like, well, I mean, it runs and drives fine, so <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going to correct that eventually, but for the meantime, it's, it doesn't seem to really be affecting anything, although it, it may be affecting more than what I thought. So, that was initial impressions. Um, on the way home, um, you know, I got on it a few times, just playing around with it on the way home. And then all of a sudden, the car wouldn't go past 4,000 RPM. It was like it was hitting a red line. Did it over and over again. It keeps stopping at like 3,800, 3,900 RPM. 
I was like, okay, clearly I'm in some sort of limp mode, which I've been through that before with more than one car. They go into limp mode, they won't, they won't let you rev so high, and sometimes they even take power away. They retard the timing and pull timing um, so that you have even less power, and they won't let you rev very high. And it's to protect the engine until you fix whatever the issue is. So I was like, oh, that's cool. I bet you this guy knew 100% that this car did this. And uh, so, yeah, I got halfway home after I punched it two or three times. Then it went into limp mode. And it's still doing it. I just got back from a drive today. Uh, you shut the car off, turn it back on. It's good to go again. You can hit, uh, you know, go over 4,000 RPM a couple times, and then it starts doing it again. So... Uh, that's the first thing I noticed that I did not find on the test drive, that I now have to figure out what is causing and correct it. So the other thing, which I expected, is some ball joint or sway sway bar links or something up in there bad. Um, the roads were like smooth and straight where I test drove it, so I couldn't really like go over any bumps or hit any curves hard. Um, so I was actually surprised at first on the test drive. I'm like, wow, the whole front end seems good. That's surprising. Uh, but after taking it out today and hitting some curves in it, if I take a curve hard enough, I'm hearing some popping and clunking down there. So definitely got some ball joints or tie rod ends or something like that that needs to dress. But no big surprise there. But that is something else that has arose since I uh, got it just yesterday, actually. And as far as I know, I think that's everything so far. Like I haven't been under it yet or really looking around under the hood. I'm sure I'll find more and I'll update when I do. But so far, that's it. So... I'm pretty bummed that uh, I can't even drive the thing now. Like I said, if I take it over 4,000 RPMs a few times, then it puts me in the limp mode. And even before it does that, this thing just has like no bottom end power. And so I'm hoping that I'm going to check the codes with my scanner and see what the codes say. And, you know, I got to correct everything that it needs. And, you know, maybe there's an oxygen sensor and those broken wires up there and that intake boot um, certainly isn't going to have it running correctly because it's getting way too much air with that. Uh, being practically tore off the throttle body there, but I got a bunch of stuff to correct on it And I'm hoping once everything's corrected that it's gonna have more bottom-end power than what it does now because Like I said, it just feels real sluggish to me and I, I I'm thinking it should have a little more bottom-end than what it does So I'm hoping once we get all these little issues corrected and what the check engine light is on for that Hopefully I'll have a little more power on top under 4,000 rpm because right now it's just it's driving me crazy because like you feel like I just got to punch it all the time to get the thing to move and then I can only hit it like twice before it goes in the limp mode so I'm basically driving around like granny right now <laughs> but yeah let me know what you guys think of the new hoopty here uh, hopefully bringing some uh, Honda K20 and RSX dudes to the channel um, like I've been saying in some of the videos you know a lot of you guys are subscribed because of the Eclipse and that's awesome uh, I don't plan on getting rid of the Eclipse anytime soon. I still got stuff to do to that. I'm still going to be playing with that. We still got to put a whole new front end in the Eclipse, which I have in boxes. I'm just waiting for decent weather. And then I'm going to do like cold air intake and different things to it, you know, make it a little faster. Uh, but hopefully this is going to start to bring in some of the other crowd. And I have more project cars and stuff coming. But so for now, we got the Eclipse to mess around with still and a whole bunch of stuff to do to this RSX. And uh, so I'll have some videos getting this thing all figured out fixed up and i can tell you i'm at least going to do cold air intake and uh, some sort of exhaust system likely be putting a header on it and i'm looking into doing a uh, ecu reflash because um, i'm not going to go spend like a thousand dollars on the k-pro and all that on the 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 base model k20 a3 i think it's called if i'm going to throw that much money into it which i'm not um, i would just go get you know do the k20 a2 swap so I'm probably just going to be doing like basic bolt-ons, uh, maybe I'll do an underdrive pulley. I still got to look into that if one's even available for these, and then do the reflash, and it should, and then it should be a, a pretty decent, fun little car. And I'll mention this again when I do like a review video of this car once I get it actually running and driving properly, get everything fixed up. That's way that way it's running and driving as it should. That way it can actually give a proper opinion on what it's like to drive it because right now it's it's not good. I got to get her fixed up first. Uh, but I always really wanted one of these because aside from some like newer cars that are still really expensive even used or at least really expensive to my broke ass. Uh, as far as I know this is like the fastest four cylinder you can get that still gets over 30 miles per gallon and runs on uh, regular 87 gas. 
because uh, there might be a few that are a little quicker, but the gas mileage isn't quite as good. But most of them that are quicker, like the Type S version of this, um, they require premium fuel for that higher performance engine to go faster. So um, this is just about, if not the quickest thing you can get that runs on 87 that gets over 30 miles per gallon. So that's that's part of the reason why it was so intriguing to me for just to get one of these base models. I mean, I would love to have a Type S and I plan to get a Type S eventually and a War Civic SI with the K20A2. But as far as like a daily driver goes, you can put the cheap gas in this uh, and get really good gas mileage. And it's, you know, it's quicker than a lot of the other stuff because most of the four cylinders out there that still run on regular, you know, they're like 120, 130 horsepower on average. So this, this guy's putting out... Uh, 160 on 87 at least it's supposed to be anyways i'm gonna cut her there i feel like i've been rambling off forever so uh let me know what you guys think and i hope to catch you on the next one Also, it was a quart low on oil. There's an exhaust shield rattle and the hood latch doesn't work right.